So what does it mean for filmmakers to use high camera angles? How are they manipulating us? We are men of action. Lies do not become us. Welcome to my series, Understanding Movies 101. This is Dr. Josh Matthews. I teach college, I teach literature and film, and I'm teaching this free course for you. Let's take a look at high camera angles and see what they mean. Now, what's a high camera angle? It's when a camera is placed above its subject matter. The camera might be just slightly above the subject, or it may be way above the subject. Let's think about this from our own point of view. When we look down at something, how does it appear to us? When we look, for example, from a plane looking down at cars or buildings or something like that, how do they look? They look very pathetic, very weak, very small, very tiny. And that's no different when we are above someone or something. When we look down at a little child, the child is obviously small. Yes, but guess what that also means? Small means weak, pathetic, puny, unable to take care of itself, insignificant, of low status. Now, this is not a meaning that has to be 100% true all the time. And so most of the time when you see a movie or video or TV show use a high camera angle, it's basically saying of its subject matter, in this particular moment, either the character in the frame or you as the viewer or both are supposed to think of that person as weak, as pathetic, as feeling weak, as feeling pathetic. And so high camera angles give you some of the psychology of characters or even the way you ought to feel as a viewer about the objects in the frame. Here's an example of how I've been manipulated by high camera angles. There's a humane society near us and I've thought about adopting a dog. Every time I go to this humane society's website, they have pictures of all the dogs and I want a smaller dog, something 30 pounds or under. When I look at these pictures of all of these dogs, they all seem small to me. So then I click on the links for each one of them. It turns out that almost all of these dogs are huge. They're way over 50 pounds. They're enormous dogs that don't fit into my house. I get annoyed by this. Now, why do I click on the links though? It's because each one of these shots, of these dogs is a high camera angle shot, making the dogs look small, thus distorting my perspective of what these dogs are. This is the way that photographs in any medium on the internet, on, in newspapers and so on, manipulate their subject matters. In fact, every photograph ever taken is biased. If anybody says otherwise, don't believe them because the bias is in the angle. This is a pretty easy thing to notice, but in fact, after teaching college students, they've seen these high camera angles thousands of times, but never paused to think once about what they actually mean. When I tell them about this, they start to notice instantly all the high camera angle shots in the movies that they watch or the TV shows. And I bet that's what will happen to you. So go take this advice and run with it. When you see a camera above a character, why is the filmmaker inserting this? Now there are two cautions. One caution is that I'm only describing what's happened in film so far. That is, for all of films for the last 120 years, high camera angles have tended to mean that the subject matter has been diminished or made puny. That does not mean that that's what high camera angles will now signify until the rest of time or in other places in the world besides Hollywood. In fact, filmmakers might change the grammatical meaning of high camera angles at some point. The second caution is my 70% rule. 70% of the time, high camera angles mean what I said they mean, but you've got filmmakers who know the grammar and then mess with it or subvert it or use high camera angles in different ways. There's a great example in the Shawshank Redemption where Andy Dufresne, the main character, gets out of prison, he frees himself, and he's standing outside in the lightning and thunder and rain rejoicing. That's a high camera angle, but it doesn't mean that he's puny or weak or pathetic, I think. I think it means other things. So there you have an example of something that subverts the classic definition of high camera angle shots that I'm giving you. As well, there are filmmakers who frankly just don't know what they're doing. So then you have those people too lumped in with the good filmmakers and thus my 70% rules. Now, you can take this advice and run with it. I see a lot of people taking selfies, and when they take selfies of themselves, usually they're putting the phone above themselves. Do they want a photo where they look weak, pathetic, or fragile? 
smaller than what they really look like? Probably not. Most of the time, they don't want a selfie. They want a selfie that makes them look important. So they ought to put the camera below themselves, not above themselves. So take this vice and run with it. And now you can take better photographs of yourself or your family or whoever else. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel, like the video, subscribe, enjoy the free content I've got that teaches you how to be a movie critic, a movie viewer, maybe even to make your own movies at home and do wonders with them. So thanks for watching. Watch the rest of my videos on my channel and take care. Have a great day.